More than 200 million years ago, violent geological forces erupted into a major disturbance in the Earth's surface. Formations buckled into folds, cracked, faulted, and weathered until the Appalachian Range stretched from Maine to Alabama. In southwestern Virginia, where the green ridges of the Alleghenies and the lofty Blue Ridge parallel, the weathering process has reduced the original 12,000-foot peaks of the Appalachians to foliage-covered tops of two to 4,000 feet. Across these ridges, man and nature completed another chapter in their struggle to live harmoniously together. The name of this chapter is a road called Interstate 77, linking arteries between the large industrial areas of the Great Lakes and the developing south. The highway faced one of its greatest challenges in crossing parallel ridges known as Little Walker and Big Walker Mountains. Before the beauty and resources of Southwest Virginia could be opened for broader leisure and commerce, this passage had to be cut through the formidable mountain of Big Walker. Tunnel bids were opened on August 23, 1967. The engineers of Virginia's Department of Highways and its consulting engineering firm brought their total skills and highly complex technology to bear on this task. and projections were followed by men and machinery. The drilling began at Little Walker. Before the Little Walker project was over, 10 million tons of dirt and rock were moved to bridge the gap between Big Walker and Little Walker. Thus, between the dream, the blueprints, and the reality was a lot of hard and complex work that required a five-year period beginning in October 1967. Big Walker Mountain was hundreds of feet taller than its little brother because of the geological surface called the Tuscarora Formation. Primarily quartzite, the Tuscarora constituted a hard hat for Big Walker Mountain. The weathering and natural erosion that carved Little Walker down to its present size had found Big Walker much tougher. But highway engineers and consultants decided to tunnel through. The cost of this would be offset by the savings and extra mileage that would be necessary to go over this mountain and the beauty of Big Walker would be undisturbed by the tunnel. The economic rationale joined with an ecological one, and the two swung the day. This was one of the biggest triumphs for Interstate 77 as it stretched from Cleveland, Ohio, to Columbia, South Carolina. Meanwhile, a miniature city had been installed on the rock fill that led to the face of the tunnel. This included a house for the large air compressors that would supply air to power drills and a concrete mixing plant. Tunnel workers are a specialized lot, hard hat men used to challenging the hard hat likes of Big Walker Mountain. Many of them came from an area around Bryson City, North Carolina, which has a reputation for producing some of the most skilled tunnel men in the world. Some of them were former coal miners from various parts of the United States. Over and 
over, the huge jumbo drilling machines roll back up against the face, and the drilling begins again. The charge holes are drilled and the explosive charges tapped into place. 120 to 150 holes are drilled up to 12 feet into the rock. Because of the danger of accidental explosion, a wet drilling process is used to reduce dust. A large amount of water flows around the drills and must be pumped out. It must be processed in sediment basins to avoid polluting the mountain streams when it flows back into them. This was but one of the many environmental protection factors which were incorporated into the design and construction of these twin tunnels. The elite of the tunnel crews are the powder men. These pros handle their explosives with a mixture of tenderness and bravery. When the holes are ready, the powder truck moves slowly into the tunnel. It is especially prepared according to state and federal safety regulations for its task. When the blast is ready, the jumbo moves back approximately 200 feet. Lights are flashed in the adjacent tunnel where the men take shelter under their own jumbo drilling rig to be safe from falling rock. When everything is set, the charge goes off. The rock falls away and Big Walker Mountain yields to the technology of modern man. When the tunnel project is over, these vehicles will have hauled over 300,000 cubic yards of rock from the twin bores. vehicles hauling the rock out of the tunnel have two steering wheels. When it is time for the driver to come out with a load, he doesn't have to back out. He simply turns and takes the other wheel and drives out just as he drove in. Ventilation tubes used in sucking out the foul air and pumping in the fresh air were made on the spot at Big Walker Mountain. Giant rollers produced up to 30 feet of pipe in 10 minutes. The pipes were installed in the tunnel to pull out the fumes from the blast and pump fresh air in while the tunnel was under construction. The ventilation was provided by fans installed in each tube. The wall and arch supports go in very carefully.
ties on the walls number over half a million, and each one must be tied in place by the skillful hands of a steel man. Concrete pumped into this frame of reinforcing steel will build the walls to a minimum thickness of 20 inches. The tubes are of a vertical horseshoe shape, although to the motorist they will appear as slightly curved walls with horizontal ceiling. One difficult task is the pumping of the concrete to form the ceiling and the overhead passage for air ducts between the ceiling and the arch. After the concrete ceiling is placed, a pneumatic mortar partition is built down the center of the arch, dividing it into two large air ducts. One becomes an exhaust duct, and the other provides for fresh air. The roadway itself, a carefully graded, completely finished slab over which an asphalt layer will be placed, is poured first. The roadway pavement will consist of 10 inches of coarse aggregate as a sub-base, 10 inches of cement concrete pavement, and 2 and 1 half inches of bituminous concrete top, 22 and a half inches of thickness in all. As the first layer of concrete is poured, workers carefully place steel mesh reinforcement. Then the additional concrete goes over the reinforced slab, and the finishing machine comes in to spread it evenly and to smooth the surface.
now begins on the big ventilation buildings. The steel girders include uniquely designed tracks for placement and maintenance of the massive electric motors and ventilating fans. The soft building will include an office, control room, garage maintenance areas, and related facilities. The north building will largely consist of storage area, but will be available for other uses if it becomes necessary. The supply of fresh air will enter the tunnels through these large vent louvers in the front and sides of the ventilation buildings. One of the more massive jobs to be done by hand began with the implanting of the light-colored ceramic tile along the tunnel's walls. The four and one-half inch tiles are laboriously placed one at a time. A total of nearly two million tiles goes into the walls. Another massive phase of the tunnel construction is the electrical work. Both portal buildings are supplied by separate external power sources, and the portal buildings are in turn connected by a high-tension line through the tunnel. Standby power is provided by diesel-driven generators in each portal building. Electrical power transfer occurs automatically if external power is lost. More than 20,000 linear feet of fluorescent lighting will reflect softly from the ceramic tiles and highlight the brightness of the ceiling. Lighting along the approaches and at the entrances and exits of the tubes is controlled to provide drivers with a transition period. The major problem of ventilation gave way to highly sophisticated solutions. Twenty-four ventilation fans would provide three blowers and three exhausts at the entrance and exit of each tube to ensure adequate fresh air. The air in the tunnel can be completely changed in two minutes. Because the cars moving south would be coming slightly down the grade, the area for fresh air ducts would not be as large as that for the northbound tunnel on a slight upgrade. The reasoning was simple. A car going downhill does not work as hard as a car going uphill, and therefore will produce less exhaust. Cars going downhill will need slightly less than a million cubic feet of air per minute. The cars going uphill, however, require over one and a half million cubic feet of air each minute. Since traffic will not always be at its peak, 
This instrumentation will regulate the blowers so as to conserve power during light traffic hours. Workers departing for tunnel jobs in other places look back with a rightful sense of pride to the Big Walker Mountain Project. It is a unique union between beauty and progress, between man and nature. For years before this new highway was dedicated, man and his vehicles have wound their way from Withville to Bland Courthouse over a tortuous and winding section of US-21. One could count on 45 minutes and 22 miles for the trip. Now he moves over Interstate 77 through the gap in Little Walker and Big Walker with ease. The 22-mile distance has been reduced to 12 miles, and the 45-minute trip now takes less than 15 minutes. But the beauty is still there, and along with the beauty, there is safety. Although there will be increased traffic, experience shows the rate of accidents will be less than one half. Man's venture into the interior of Big Walker has saved not only time, but lives. Interstate 77 has joined with Interstate 81, and the traffic now moves north and south and east and west. It is easy to move through the area, but more and more travelers cannot resist the temptation to stop and enjoy the beauty. Visitors have a choice of camping in national forests or by man-made lakes, surrounded by the beauty of the trees and mountains that were not created by the hand of man. Mount Rogers National Recreation Area developed at the highest peaks, is bringing a kind of alpine beauty that many people will see for the first time in their lives. In addition, an area of Appalachia long denied the benefits of American growth by its virtual inaccessibility has been open to new forms of progress. The highway is encouraging industry, business, and employment. The tax base is broadening, new schools are being built, and the economic possibilities stretch on and on. Many people of this area have dreamed of this reality for an untold number of years. And today their dream stands before them in fulfillment. A modern interstate highway to connect their mountain empire with the vast world that lies beyond the hills and valleys. <laughs>